and let's bid farewell to this one whom they have loved so dearly and has loved them in return. It's a difficult time, but it's always comforting to know they have family and friends such as you to gather about and support them at this time. And on a personal note, I would like to thank you for the privilege and honor of doing the service for Steve today. God bless you all. Would you pray with me, please? Father, this is an hour when it is very difficult. We can find no strength within ourselves, so we must look to you. And pray that your spirit of peace and consolation will invade this time, will invade the hearts and minds of each one here. And that, Father, we will look to you for that guidance we need and support in days to come. We now commit this service to you, Father, and may all that is said and done be pleasing in your sight, honoring to see you, and comforting to the family. That is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We are gathered here today to honor the life of Steve Allen Ritchie, who, is Sir Lawrence, who has surrendered the life that he could not keep for a life which he now cannot lose. He is in that place where pain and suffering are not known. There's only quiet rest and peace for him. Steve entered his life on February the 17th, 1957, in Houston, Texas, the son of Christine and Albert Ritchie. Grew up in the Galveston area where he attended Galveston College following his tour of duty in the, as the Marine Corps. Then he went on to complete his education in refrigeration and air conditioning at TCC. And that was an occupation and a trade which he pursued for some 40 years. And in the process of his life, he met this young gal named Joan. She came alone, stole his heart. They were married. And that was a union of love and devotion which lasted some 34 years. And together they raised a family of three, Stephanie, James, and Sabrina. They were the light and the focus of his life. And they exclaimed, and the tribute they paid to him said he was an awesome dad and an awesome husband. Steve was a self-willed man, I understand. Some might say self-willed could be translated as stubborn. But he did so with a sense of humility. He was friendly and outgoing, always talking about the Lord and simply sharing his faith. And it was said that in his friendly, caring, and persuasive way, they believed he could really sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Along with that, he had a great outlook on life. He taught the kids to be thankful for what they had, but to pursue their dreams. He wanted the best for them. His philosophy was when seen, things seemed to go downhill, take a look at the bright side of things, because the bad will pass, and you can always look upon it with a smile. Put a smile on it and move on, was his tendency. Steve was not all serious and philosophical. He had a great sense of humor. He loved to crack practical jokes, harmless practical jokes. Many times he would hide when one of the family, one of the kids particularly, would come out of the restroom. He'd be there just to frighten them, make them jump. And that particularly took place about 2 o'clock in the morning, which is even better. Another fun time was when he would take them all fishing. He loved fishing. Deep sea fishing, as he called it. He took the sport very seriously from the standpoint of bragging rights. And a good fisherman always looks at fishing from the standpoint of bragging rights. And there was even a little contest between he and James one time. They were out deep sea fishing and James' rod got all messed up somehow. And Steve handed James his rod. He said, hold this for me. And I'll straighten out the mess you got. And about the time he handed the rod over to James, it bent half in two. And James just cranked in this beautiful big old red fish. Said, look what I caught. And therein started the contest. <laughs> he said, no, that's my fish. And James says, no, it's my fish. I caught it. <laughs> Steve said, no, it's my fish. You used my pole to catch it. So I, I don't know if they ever really resolved that issue. But it was a prize, and they had fun sharing those thoughts and those memories. 
It is said that when someone you love becomes a memory, those memories become treasures. And there are many, many more treasures that could be shared here today. Many, many more times that we could take and give instances that would be the celebration of Steve's life. And God gives us these memories so that when we have to surrender the physical presence of the one we love, we have the memories to cherish and keep in our hearts. And today we commit the earthly remains of Stephen to the ground, but we commend his eternal soul to the Lord and the treasure of his memory to your heart and mine. I'd like to add to that memory these words. I take a little poetic license with this. We're all familiar with Psalm 23, called the Shepherd's Psalm. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil, but I rod and staff comfort me. <laughs> I'd like to take this and have you remember in this regard. The Lord is your shepherd today. He will not have you to be wanting, wanting for comfort and peace. He will lead you in paths of righteousness. He will lead you in green pastures of peace and quiet. He will lead you beside the streams of memory as you walk through life from this day. Even though today you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear nothing, for God is with you. If you add that to the memories of this day, your memories will have a pleasant, or at least a more peaceful and restful thought. We say not goodbye, we say farewell. For the day is coming when we will all be reunited and we can look forward to the time when Steve will be there waiting for us to say, welcome home. I'm here waiting on you. And in conjunction with that, you were given, if you were fortunate enough to be there last night, a remembrance folder for Steve. And in it was a wonderful poem. And I'd like you to take that poem and, and read it and think of it in regards as Steve talking to you today. It was this. He says, I'm home in heaven, dear ones. Oh, so happy and so bright. There is perfect joy and beauty in this everlasting light. All the pain and grief is over. Every restless tossing past, and I'm now at peace forever, safely home in heaven at last. Did you wonder so calmly trod? Did you wonder is so calmly trod the valley of the shade? Oh, but Jesus loved illuminated every dark and fearful glade. And he came himself to meet me in the way so hard he to tread. And with Jesus' arm to lean on, could I have no doubt or dread? Then you must not uh, agree so sorely, for I love you dearly still. Try to look beyond earth's shadows. Pray to trust your Father's will. There is work still waiting for you, so you must not idly stand. Do it now while life Remain it. You shall rest in Jesus' lane. And when that work is completed, He will gently call you home. Oh, the rapture of that meeting. Oh, the joy to see you come. Jesus had said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I've gone and prepared one for you. Stephen is in that mansion prepared for him. It's not only a place of his rest in peace, joy and the light of the Lord. There's also a place of waiting where that day he will look to you and say, well, my prayer for you this day, folks, is this, that the peace of God which passes all understanding, the peace and love and comfort that he will offer, go with you from this place, be your companion in God from this day forward. May it ever so be. Gentlemen, <laughs> you'll have a 
sound of the shofar, which is a trumpet that we'll hear again when the Lord returns. Ha ha ha. 